the increasing availability of PCI, primary PCI, has certainly reduced the incidence of cardiogenic shock. But when it does occur, and it still does, and particularly in patients who have resuscitated from cardiac arrest, the mortality is still very, very high. We're going to be talking about primary PCI in patients with acute myocardial infarction who have been resuscitated from cardiac arrest and cardiogenic shock. And this is the role of primary multivessel revascularization. And I want to talk to you with what, today with one of the award winners, a Jack Interventions Young Author Award winner. And this is Darren Mylot, who is an MRCPI, an MD, and a fellow at McGill University Health Center in Montreal. You were in Paris, though, when you did the study, right? That's correct. I was at uh, the Institut Cardiovascular du Paris Sud uh, in Massy in Paris, France. And this was in the February issue of Jack Interventions, 2013. Now, can you talk a little bit about the study? This is a tough crowd to, uh, to treat, let me tell you. Yeah, I think the, the basic premise of the study was that um, uh, the, the survival from patients with multivessel disease uh, and cardiogenic shock is pretty awful. Uh, add in cardiac arrest and you're looking at, uh, uh, you're really looking at uh, mortality rates of about 65% at, um, uh, at six months. The idea for the study was the fact that um, in the guidelines, uh, after opening the infarct-related artery, um, uh, there is a guidance that we can, in selected cases, go ahead and try and perform multivessel PCI. Though to date, uh, all studies that have looked at this have produced uh, neutral or negative results. The idea about this study was that perhaps um, the reason that we didn't see a survival advantage of multivessel PCI was that we had a huge selection bias. And in previous studies, patients who had undergone multivessel PCI tended to be sicker than those who just had single vessel PCI. So the addition of the cardiac arrest leveled the playing field to, to a degree in that these patients were really very sick. We had 94% were on inotropes when they were admitted, 77% had balloon pumps, 83% were defibrillated. Um, it was really a very sick population. And then when we broke it down uh, into those that had multivessel disease compared to those who had single vessel disease, those with multivessel disease had uh, more comorbidities, had lower admitting, admission blood pressure, uh, and six months survival was worse. So that, I suppose, set up the fact that um, uh, the, the basic premise for the study, which is that more or more global myocardial ischemia uh, is associated with worse outcomes. Then we went on and we looked at those who had multivessel disease and we had 66 patients who had multivessel PCI compared to 103 patients who had single vessel PCI. Their baseline characteristics were um, uh, pretty much the same, though perhaps with uh, slightly re longer resuscitation intervals for those with uh, with single vessel PCI, but we saw a dramatic mortality advantage in those who had multivessel PCI. Uh, six month survival in those with multivessel disease and single, uh, single vessel PCI was in the region of about 20%, and it was double that, 42% or 43% in those who had multivessel PCI. Now, undoubtedly, there is a degree of selection bias. Um, perhaps patients who were sicker didn't get the multivessel PCI, but I think the study shows for the first time that. Um, that if we fail to uh, reverse shock in patients with STEMI and um, having opened the infarct-related artery, that there is perhaps a role for multivessel PCI in this very sick, uh, in this very sick uh, patient cohort. And this reinforces what the guidelines already say, correct? Yeah, yeah absolutely. The, the guidelines have stated this for a very long time, though with, with very little supporting evidence. Okay. Uh, even if we, look at the, if we look at the shock trial, those patients who had multivessel PCI did worse than those who had single vessel PCI, but again there was a selection bias, and indeed the, uh, the PCI that was performed in the shock trial really wasn't contemporary. Only 30% of patients had stents, um, uh, the, uh, the successful PCI rate was down in the 60s, whereas in our study we had 95% of patients who had, who had stents uh, and uh, successful PCI uh, greater, than, uh, greater than 80% of cases. Congratulations uh, on the award, also, Thank you. and on the work that you did over in uh, in Paris. And Thank you. Now you're you're a little closer to uh, to us here. You're in Montreal. Right. Dr. Mylot's uh, winning paper is in Jack Interventions in February of 2013. Go read that paper. And for more from ACC and from uh, San Francisco, please check us out. Cardiosource World News. I'm Executive Editor Rick McGuire.